Two months ago, I proved to you that you can 3D print a working air compressor. It was pretty simple, and it could do some simple things, like pumping up a water bottle, and it brought it up to about 20 PSI. But then there were the comments. There was people suggesting that I should actually make a vacuum pump. Then I got thinking, well, how would I make a vacuum pump? And then I realized, I already made one. And that is what I'm going to show you today. I'm going to do a couple of experiments with it, and we're going to see, does it work as well as it does as a compressor? Very stale. Now, the air compressor I had already made is actually also a vacuum pump. It just depends on how you look at it. Now, pumps work because they displace fluid or air from one place, and then they put it somewhere else. In the case of a compressor, it's taking in air from the outside atmosphere, and then it's cramming it all into a bottle. Listen to it. But. What we can do is switch the lines to reverse the process. So now what it's doing is it's breathing from the bottle and then it's displacing it out into the open air. And that is how a vacuum pump works. One second, please. What this one does instead is it breathes from this line here and then displaces it out into the open air from this hole here. Cool, so we solved half of the problem. We got a vacuum pump, but now I actually need something to draw a vacuum out of. Now, naturally, I first considered a water bottle again because that's what we were using before. But the problem is, they're not very stiff. Next, I considered using a steel bottle, which would actually work, but that would be really, really boring because you wouldn't see what's going on inside. So that sucks. After some more digging, I remembered I had one of these. Because it's glass, that means it's see-through and it's not gonna collapse. Now to get this to work, I had to make a new head that has two holes in it. One for the vacuum line and another one for a boost gauge so we can actually see how much vacuum we're drawing. Also, fun fact, the units of measurement are inches of mercury, which literally means if you were to have a tube and draw some vacuum out of it, the displacement in inches of the mercury is the measurement of vacuum. That's not important. But when you see that when I turn it over with a drill, it actually is drawing a vacuum. And because of that, let's do some experiments. Now, the very first thing that came to mind was to actually test a marshmallow. You see, marshmallows are actually just a sugary foam that's been aerated. So what this means is that if we put it in a vacuum chamber, it should start to expand because of all the air inside that's trying to escape. All right, so the first test is with the marshmallow, and we're gonna put it in the vacuum chamber and see what happens. So drop that in there, like that. Uh, and let's see what this does. I can't get the lid open because it's under pressure. I gotta wait till it returns to zero because I can't get the lid off. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the marshmallow test was actually a pass. I'm gonna show you before and after on the screen and you can see that as the vacuum is being drawn out of it, it's starting to grow. And if you're wondering how it tastes... Very stale. Now the second thing I wanted to test is actually a syringe. If we plug one of the ends, you can see that it makes a perfect seal. When you push it down, it repels because the pressure inside is getting bigger, so it acts like a spring. And the opposite is true if you pull it back. So theoretically speaking, if I put it in a vacuum chamber, what should happen is that we should watch the piston start to move outwards because the pressure outside is actually getting less. The next thing on the list is this syringe here. So uh, let's go ahead and try it out and see what happens. This might be a little bit hard to see, but let's see what happens. Three, two, one. And look at that. You can see that as the vacuum is being drawn out, the syringe is actually getting longer. And if we wait long enough, theoretically, it should return to its regular size. Any minute now. Right now, the pressure gauge is reading zero and the syringe is still the same length. The problem was actually just that the O-ring was actually getting a little hung up, so it was trying to return to its original size. From this experiment, this actually gives us a really good understanding of how pressure really works. You see, there's no such thing as negative pressure because that would imply that there is less than zero air molecules inside of a chamber, which isn't possible. Instead, what's happening is it's because the pressure surrounding it is actually getting lesser. So we think that the pressure inside is increasing. And this is actually the truth for pumping something up with air. It's not necessarily that the thing inside has more pressure, it's that the pressure surrounding it is less. It's easy to forget, but the atmosphere is actually pressured. So when you change the pressure inside of something, it causes a reaction. 
And this is what's happening inside of the vacuum chamber. As the pressure surrounding the syringe is getting lesser, it starts to expand outwards, which makes you think that the pressure inside is getting greater, but it's not. The last thing that I wanted to test out was a can of sparkling water. Now the theory behind this is that if we put this in a vacuum chamber, what'll happen is all the carbonation will get drawn out. I have no idea if this is going to work. It sounds like it makes sense, so let's do it. Okay, so this brings us to our last and arguably most interesting test, the sparkling water. The other two I could easily predict what was going to happen, but I actually don't know what's going to happen with this. I don't know if uh, we're going to see it fizzing out, so let's try it. I'm gonna pour a liberal amount in there and then put the lid back on. And now we can actually see what's going to happen. Okay, so it's clearly drawing some of it out, but how much has it drawn out? Definitely drawn some of the water out with it though. With the exception of a few bubbles in it, it actually has pretty much returned it to just regular water. So that was pretty cool. Now the last time I did anything with this compressor, I didn't do anything useful. I was pretty much just pumping up a water bottle with it. But in this video, I really wanted to prove that there is some functional things you can do with it. I'm gonna leave it up to you guys in the comments section to tell me what you wanna do with this compressor. I'm not too sure right now, but all I know is that you better subscribe or else your bones are gonna get weak. Anyways, until then, see you guys.